today I have kind of a special announcement. We all love getting boxes in the mail, so much so that there are a number of quad box type products which you kind of subscribe to and every so often they send you a box full of stuff and it's a uh, much higher value than what you spent spent on the box and they just kind of send it to you and you don't really know what you're getting. There are a couple of problems with this model and I personally see it as a really big opportunity for the entire community. I talk to a lot of people that very much like myself really enjoy testing products and giving a lot of feedback and trying to help the industry just move forward. We also love knowing what's coming and, the, and just having the newest of the newest of the newest products to work with. So I presented my kind of vision of, of this kind of subscription box product to them and we discussed it for a while and we came up with a way to do it that maybe you guys will like. So here's what we envision. Kind of a Kickstarter meets quad box type product in which all the money that's being contributed is used to either stimulate a product, either an existing product or a new product that's coming or actually drive development of a product or just to see if there's demand for a particular product that, that some people that are developing or want to know if they should develop or should not develop. I mean, a lot of this stuff has a lot of risk to it. And it would make the person doing the development feel much more comfortable knowing that they have an audience that's ready and waiting. So here's how we've generally imagined it to work. There are a number of boxes or crates and you get to decide which ones you want to buy. They will have vague descriptions. A lot of the time we can't actually disclose details because they're either secret or just things are changing so much that we don't even know what it's going to be or it hasn't even been made yet so we, we don't even know what it's going to turn into. So you won't get a full description of what's going to be in the box but you'll get an idea of what it might be and you can pick up however many boxes you want. They're not going to be like monthly or anything like that. They're, they're going to be individual products or little groupings of products that will be sold for less than MSRP so you definitely get a discount and you get it as soon as the product gets out. So immediately when the product is available, it is automatically shipped to you. As soon as we were done with our initial meeting discussing this, we already had a lineup of products that we wanted to do this with, and we've already discussed it with the manufacturers, and a couple of them are, have already gotten back. It's Sunday today. We were discussing this on Friday, and we already have responses from manufacturers that said, yes, this sounds like a great idea. We'd love to participate. The first product we're going to do this with is a frame product because that's what I personally do, and it's pretty easy for me to control kind of the whole process. And I have been slowly working on a new acro frame concept, which kind of arose from nothing, just popped into my head one morning. I did not ever expect that it might work, but it is kind of a really interesting concept, and I think that people are really going to like it. It doesn't really replace the flow ride, but it is a really interesting alternative, and I'm going to leave it at that. You can go check out the website. It's quadlab.io, and please sign up if you're interested, and we'll see if this experiment works. Okay, so let's, let's discuss this thing first. This is, um, this is, this is one one of my weirdo frames, but the, the thing that you see underneath is the light. And that's what I was flying at night. So what I want is I, I would really love to kind of soar around in pitch blackness with a big spotlight as I'm flying around. So when I'm diving through trees, you don't really see what's coming up. You just see what the immediate light lights up for you. The problem is that the GoPro is really not that fantastic at picking up um, dark light so you really need a lot of power in your in whatever spotlight that you're using so I've I picked up this light it's a, a motorcycle at least it's expected to be a motorcycle headlight and I was hoping that that would be bright enough unfortunately the GoPro still has a lot of trouble picking up the light okay so at this point a lot of people say why don't you just use IR or why don't you use just some other sort of light source and that's awesome and there are videos online of actually one really cool video from a long time ago that I'm going to show you right now but that's not what I want I want the GoPro to be able to record and I want all the colors I want all the details I want it to look like I'm driving a car but flying a quad through <laughs> A mysterious jungle of sorts and so what happened was I just I just got the light and I strapped it to the bottom of the quad just like whatever and I flew around a bit and at, at the beginning I didn't take the reflector off so it had a reflector on it and it, it was really really focused the light spot was really too focused so I couldn't see anything about where I was going so I took the reflector off and I started flying around it was raining that night and it did rain last night too so I wasn't able to record it again um, but 
<laughs> I didn't realize that the reflector actually holds the LED board down. And as you might see, the board kind of, it melted itself. It melted its own paste and it fell off the aluminum. So that's what the smoking was at the end of the video. It was the paste on the back of the board just smoking itself. And if I hadn't have uh, unplugged it immediately, it probably would have fried the LED and everything else on board. Anyways, I'm going to keep going with this concept because I think it's really interesting. And I'll see where I end up. So here's the other thing I want to talk about. So I've recently done a lot of the little 2.5 inch stuff and they're all really, really cool. But as I've said uh, more than once, there's really no point in building these things because if you just buy a Baby Hawk R in the two inch and put 2.5 inch arms on it with the Gemfan Flash 2540 props, which are these props here, you're gonna get pretty much the best performance you can get for a 2.5, really close to the best performance you can get for a 2.5 inch quad for a lot less money than if you build one yourselves. And that's why the future of this quad is kind of in question, the little tiny super light one, the 44 gram kind of dry weight one. And so Underground FPV recently sent me these props. These are the Azure 3060 props, and they're based off the 5150 props, which I really, really love. They're really fantastic props. I think they're probably the best racing prop. If I was a racer, I'd use these props. And I built this entire quad just to use the props because I didn't have a quad that would accept the 5mm Prop Hub 3-inch props. And so before I rebuilt the quad, I decided to redesign the Tooth Fairy frame. And the arms are pretty much the same. They, they are definitely the same. And I just redesigned the body. I made the body a little bit longer so that the camera can sit completely inside. The battery fits much more comfortably on top. The top and bottom plates are now exactly the same. So it's much easier to manage stock and supply of all the parts. I now put these little antenna tube holes in the top plate, which is really nice for the forever tubes. And it makes, it really, makes a really nice clean place to mount your antennas. And uh, yeah, that's it. The frame is pretty much the same. But I built this quad, and these are the Hyperlite 1407 3600KV motors. The, they're a brother hobby motor, but they these are the very first Hyperlite 1407 3600KV motors. This is, these are the very first prototype motors that uh, Brother Hobby sent us in this color scheme and with the little style that we wanted. And um, I haven't flown them in probably a year and a half. Whenever, whenever the last time... They, whenever they came out, I flew them for maybe like uh, five, six packs, and I haven't flown them since. They're really excellent four-inch motors, so I wasn't expecting too much on three-inch because I have flown these motors on four-inch, and they have been really, really amazing. I would really recommend the 4022 or the slightly higher KV for three-inch, but when I put these props on these motors, I was really, really impressed. The quad weighs 140 grams dry, which is, which is the all-up weight is, is about 85 grams more than my little 2.5 inch quads that can also run three inch if you put slightly longer arms on them, it doesn't weigh any more. And so I've had a number of these kinds of quads in the past, the three inch 1407 build, and I really think 1407 is too big of a motor for three inch. I think 1306 is really the right size, but we don't have any good 1306 motors. So 1407 it is. And the, the Emax 1306 motor is not the best build quality. So when I say a good 1306, I mean, you know, the best magnets, the best windings, the best everything. We don't have one of those yet. And these 1407s are super duper powerful and super meaty, even though the KV is a little bit low. Anyways, so this quad fly is really amazing. The props feel fantastic. They've got a lot of punch, definitely not the fastest, but they've got a lot of punch, a lot of grip, a lot of control. And even though this quad weighs 100 grams more all up weight, than the other 2.5 inch quads, which are pretty much the same weight as a, a three inch if you were to extend the arms out to three inch. I would recommend this build over these little tiny builds. And the reason is that they they cost the same. They, they're the same thing. So like, why why would you spend the money on this when you could build something like this that's that's a lot more robust? And that's the most important thing to mention is the robustness of this build. And what I mean by robustness is that these tiny little motors, while they're great and this quad doesn't really break, things are exposed, the motors are really frail and fragile. I've actually already bent uh, one of my 1108 motors. I ran into a tree or something and one of the bells are a little bit bent. And things happen that do break these quads. They're not really that easy to break, but they do break. And on this quad, I have spent the, week, the weekend totally bashing it into everything in sight. And all I broke were the standoffs that um, were plastic. So I have to actually put new standoffs in there that hopefully are made of something other than plastic to hold my flight controller on. Uh, anyways, I would, I would really, I would not recommend building a 2.5 inch. If you were going to build, if you, if you want a 2.5 inch, really just buy a Baby Hawk R 
and put the 2.5 inch arms on it. If you're gonna build something of that size, there's really no point building something like this is is about the same price. It may, might be five, ten dollars more, and you just get a much more robust quad where the frame is more durable, the motors are highly unlikely to bend or break, and this thing moves quick, but it's the motors are really big for the size of quad. And it's just, it's a better all around experience because it's easier to manage this thing. The other thing I wanna show you is this. This is the Aomway TX004 motor, uh, sorry, VTX. And I think it's a really, really awesome VTX. When I found that VTX, or actually a commenter suggested that VTX on one of my little micro builds. I was really surprised because it's a really amazing setup. Although it doesn't have the MMCX that I like, it still has a, a, a UFL connector, which I hate. The board, look how thin that thing is. Look how tiny the VTX is. It, it, it like disappears in your stack. And it's it's got a flat bottom so I can mount it really close to carbon. It's really, really nice and convenient. That's why I like that VTX. Otherwise, the um, 4-in-1 is the DYS F18A. And I'm really not a fan of DYS electronics because they're not really as reliable as I would like them to be. But this board is working really excellent. It does have a current sensor. It's not BL Heli 32, which is fine. But I mentioned that because you don't need to actually set your UART to ESC sensor to get the current sensing going on in your OSD. So I'm really impressed by this uh, 4 in 1. It, it does work. It's worked really flawlessly so far. This is the FPV AF. 2507 motor and I, I really don't show that many motors but I'm showing this one because it's a 2507 motor comes in 2500 and 2200 kV but it's $21 and that's the key it's a really super high quality motor for a very low price and this motor kind of has a really interesting history so Vince went to Hawksky and just told them just just give me the best freaking motor you can build the best motor your manufacturer your factory can put out don't worry about the cost just give it to me and make it in a 2507 size with whatever kv 2500 and 2200 kv and that's exactly what this motor is it's the best motor that Hawksky can make and the 21 dollars price is very very close to the cost of the motor i think it's 20 or 21 dollars and i'm really i really appreciate that ready ready made rc did that it's really great of them to do. They're really selling this massive motor for a very reasonable price. And I'm going to go over, you know, motor size and things in a minute. But first, I want to talk about uh, the differences you might find in a motor of this size versus um, a smaller motor. Also, the uh, ZMX F40 or sorry, X40 Phonics 40 motor, which is a 2607 motor, which usually retails for $31. It was available for $21 or $22 from another, well, for one of these shops. They're just trying to liquidate the motors. Um, so I do know that that motor was a great value at one time. It might still be available. If I remember the shop or if somebody remembers or knows where it is, put it in the description, in the comments below. I'll add it to the description um, because it is a really amazing motor or amazing value. And I'll talk about what the uses for these kinds of motors are in a minute. By the way, this 2507 is a 40 gram motor, and this 2307 is a 33 gram motor, which is a pretty huge difference. But let's see why that is. All right, so this is a 2307 on the right. 2307, still a pretty big motor. This is the 2507 on the left. That's a pretty hefty like size. I mean, look at that. You got everything is bigger on this motor. You've got thicker windings, you've got um, wider stators, like the actual stator uh, poles are much wider, same number of stators, same number of poles, but the actual stators itself, so you've got more iron in this uh, these stator poles, which is really interesting, and also the inner aluminum that holds the stator in place is actually thicker, a lot thicker, the bearing is also bigger, and it's just generally a, a bigger motor, and that's that's why it weighs 40 grams. Anyways, let's talk about what you might use this motor for. So what the motor was made for is 5-inch super-duper ultra-aggressive props and 5S or 6S. And that is kind of where the motor needs to be. If you're going to run this motor on anything less than a super-duper aggressive prop, this uh, this prop is probably the least aggressive. The Azure 5150 is probably the least aggressive prop I would recommend on these massive motors and 5S. Just don't even bother running 4S. This motor doesn't even, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything on 4S. You really need 5S. But what I personally think the motor is best for with this wide of a, st a stator is probably six inch. So 2507, 2500 kV or 2200 kV on six inch and 5S or 6S, 
that is going to be a rocket ship and that's probably that's what i'm going to build with the motor next but that's where the motor is going to shine i put it on a five inch acro build but i took it off to build the six inch because i it wasn't the motor wasn't being loaded enough and the quad wasn't actually a whole lot more powerful than my lighter 4s acro quads and i prefer the lighter weight so i'm moving it over to six inch to see what they can do that's it i'll do another video on that later but i hope you guys are interested in the uh, quad lab product and um don't forget to floss please maybe i'll put floss in the boxes yep take care